Okay, thank you, Umer and Osgun. Um, next, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce Jay Krebs. Jay is our invited keynote speaker today. He is the creator of Apache Kafka. And he's the CEO of Confluent, a company driving the development of Kafka, Apache Kafka. Previously, he was the lead architect for data infrastructure at LinkedIn. Jay? All right. Um, this is not my presentation. <laughs> but I can get through it. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know a lot about this subject. Um, do, do, can we switch? My, mine is um, the Apache Kafka one. <laughs> oh, wow. It would have been way better if I just did a presentation on something I don't know. Um, OK. Uh, so this one's going to be a little bit different. I, I'm going to talk um, you know, about a, uh, an analogous idea, but, but not directly uh, related to Postgres. Uh, I'm going to talk about a system called Apache Kafka. And I'm going to talk about this uh, idea of having a kind of data center-wide commit log. Um, and I'll, I'll say a little bit about what I mean. So a lot of this work came out of uh, LinkedIn. So um, you know, th this is a project uh, me and a team of people worked on for about five years at LinkedIn. Um, we, and I'll, I'll kind of explain where we were coming from, what the system's trying to do. I'll even make a few connections to Postgres, so it makes some sense why I'm here. <laughs> so you know, the problem we were having is we actually just had this mess of different uh, data systems. So it's actually, this is a little bit related to the, the talk right before. Um, you know, we, we had kind of the classic problem everybody understands of capturing changes out of databases. You want to maybe get it into analytical systems like Hadoop or a data warehouse. You want to get these to propagate to caches or other derived stores. But our, our kind of world of data was actually a little bigger than this kind of classical transaction data. Like I, I think for most companies this would be it. Maybe you know, 10 years ago you'd have your customer table and your products table and your whatever table. But um, we, we were actually interested in a whole kind of wider set of data that we, we really didn't support very well. So we, we were interested in what was happening in the business. And you know, this is a whole area that's kind of been neglected, I think, by infrastructure. So you know, data systems typically store state, you know, what, what currently is your, your rows, but they don't deal as well with like, what's happening in the business, like activity data. And, and so for a website, this is who clicked on what, you know, page views, ads, like all that kind of stuff. But every business has this. Um, and this type of logging or activity data, and we, we handled this by just like logging it out to some central service and like basically are syncing it around. I mean, it was, pretty, it was pretty gnarly under the covers. It was slow and batchy, but it was, it was efficient. Um, and this data is usually very large. So, so for us, this was probably you know, several orders of magnitude bigger. Um, but, but this was really very fragile and always breaking and not, kind of not really supported well by, by infrastructure. Um, and, and then we had a problem of just kind of like operational data, like how are our systems running, you know, what are our metrics. By the time I left, I think LinkedIn had like literally millions of, of real-time metrics that we ran the site off of. And at the time we started this project, we had much less than that, so just a few kind of ad hoc systems that supported this. And uh, we had messaging systems. And you know, these were kind of dis, you know, deployed in kind of an ad hoc way. So, um, so this was our state when we started this project about five years ago. We had all these different systems. They all kind of had different characteristics. Some were, um, you know, some were real time and fast. They could get data around quickly. Uh, some were kind of batchy and slow. Some would get you the right answer. Um, some were kind of like mostly right, like logging. You know, mostly you get the logs there. But <laughs> um, so, uh, but none of them were all of these. So th they were all kind of limited in different ways. And um, when you put them all together, it was kind of a giant mess. So, so as you kind of scaled out across data centers, as you scaled your overall data, you had to think about each of these different kinds of pipelines for data, how data flowed. Um, and you had to think about how you were going to scale them and how it was going to work across data centers. Every time a new system needed to get data, how you would tap into all these different data sources was kind of like a scavenger hunt where you go team from team and try and figure it out. Um, and so this was how I kind of got involved coming out of more of an infrastructure background in the whole like ETL and data flow problem and how this actually works in companies. It's a, you know, it's a pretty gnarly thing <laughs> once you learn about it. Um, but, and, and we wanted something a little bit better. So, so coming out of an infrastructure background, I wanted like, an infrastructure solution. Is there some way that you could um, build something that would kind of make this easy? So rather than having a big team of you know, kind of consultants that would come and you know, um, script up data copies or rsync jobs or you know, whatever, um, is there a better way to do this? Um, you know, of course, there are existing solutions for basically getting data between relational databases. But kind of beyond that, 
but there wasn't as much. Um, and the idea we came up with is this idea of having kind of a central commit log. I mean, this, this is an idea that came out of databases. We had previously done kind of a lot of the distributed systems work in LinkedIn. We built kind of a you know, distributed database there and, and operated it at a very large scale. And one of the ideas I liked best about data management that came out of databases was this idea of a log, this idea that you would have kind of an ordered sequence of what happened, and this is what we feed everything else. So obviously in databases, you know, this is kind of where your data goes first, and then it kind of gets out into all your indexes. If you're doing any kind of replication, this would feed other replicas. And then very often in a distributed database, this is kind of the primary mechanism for distributing data within you know, the cluster into replicas. So, so we wanted to kind of make something like this, um, but really have it be uh, kind of a standalone service. So something that anything could tap into that applications could build around where you could kind of tap into what was being uh, happening in the business and actually process it as it occurred. You could replicate it into a kind of data warehouse environment, maybe on a kind of data warehouse schedule of maybe once a day, but you could also tap into it in real time as things happened. So th this was kind of the idea we had. And what we came up with um, was the system Kafka. So we, you know, we, we experimented with different things that were available in open source. And we thought, you know, actually, if you really want to do this at very large scale, um, you're probably going to end up building something uh, from scratch. Um, and this is what we did. And um, what Kafka is, is it's basically like a, um, you know, a distributed lock. So you have a cluster. It you know, transparently scales out across machines. Um, it handles failures within the cluster. Um, producers can kind of up, you know, send streams of records, and consumers can kind of tap in and consume them. Uh, but it's built around this log abstraction. So the core thing that Kafka gives you is basically a log. So it's kind of like the least powerful database of all time from a query point of view. Uh, but, but there is something to be said for doing something, uh, you know, one, some one thing really, really well at large scale. And since our idea was really to be able to do this at the scale of a company, this was really what we wanted. We wanted to be able to put everything onto this, have you know, thousands of people all working against this system without um, killing each other or, breaking it or bringing it down, you know, have it be cheap enough for all these different types of data. And um, you know, this is kind of what we worked on. And it turns out um, you know, this works pretty well. So, so a Kafka topic or a category or feed of data would be like a partition block like this, and this would be spread out over these clusters. And, and there would be one of these um, you know, LinkedIn for each uh, type of data, so page views or um, you know, customer uh, upgrades or, um, hey, times we bounced a server. <laughs> um, literally everything that was kind of happening in the business, it was like an event that occurred would be, would be put into one of these logs, um, as well as updates to tables, which you can also kind of think of as a, a type of event, like, hey, the, the new uh, customer account value is this. And um, Kafka provides a mechanism to scale out the processing of this data so you can have groups of consumers that tap into these streams and kind of distribute the work over themselves, uh, which is obviously important. Uh, if you wanted to be able to capture big streams of data, you have to be able to um, you know, distribute the processing of that, those big streams. Um, so that's what we did. The, the kind of categories of this were really important. So, so it had to be scalable enough to really work with uh, log data, which is very high volume. So, you, so it has to have good kind of um, characteristics operationally. So it has to be cheap to run. You have to be able to get hundreds of megabytes per second of throughput per machine that you add to the cluster. You have to be able to store many terabytes of data per server. It's got to run on commodity hardware. And probably most importantly, you know, writes have to be like uh, order one, meaning you can't get slower as you log more data. <laughs> um, uh, you have to be able to you know, provide guarantees as strong as the other systems you're working with. So if you have, you know, um, OLTP databases that are consistent and you know, whatever, you, you can't basically lose data, misorder updates, um, you know, drop, drop events if you want to ha handle um, kind of important stuff. And we wanted something that was uh, distributed by design. So, so I think you know, the, the systems I've, I've seen, like they, they kind of end up, um, if you want to really run them as a kind of platform at company scale, you have to kind of design for that. So, you know, replication has to be thought out from the, from the ground up, fault tolerance, partitioning, how all these things work are really kind of core aspects of the system. And, and the result of that was we were able to kind of take this giant mess, and over a period of years, we were actually able to kind of reform it a little bit and take each of these different types of data, put it into a central log. And what that opened up was an architecture that looked a little bit more like this, where um, you know, our kind of real-time world uh, up top was able to produce streams of what happened. So we were able to capture database changes. We were able to um, capture stuff that was you know, happening in applications, more like event data. Um, we were able to take any of those things that were captured in one of these streams and 
tap into it in real time and transform it into other streams. So, um, and we were able to you know, use this to feed kind of the data warehouse, as well as the whole ecosystem of kind of real time monitoring or real time alerting. Um, and you can kind of think about this as you know, a very big, messy database of sorts, where you have a kind of commit log, which is feeding effectively different indexes of data. Um, you know, a, a different world of this would be to do everything in one, uh, you know, one big database. Um, but, but the practical you know, um, aspect of this was be, by be, you know, kind of being able to federate data across these things. Each area can kind of get very sophisticated. So one, one of the things we realized was this area of stream processing is actually very useful. So transforming data as it arrives turns out to be like far more applicable than we believed. Um, of course, we'd always had like materialized views and triggers and databases, but actually, you know, having a whole application development you know platform where you could have hundreds of people writing programs actually really opened that up um, as as an, a way that we process data. Um, and and this became kind of like the core you know backbone for for data at LinkedIn. Um, and it you know, ended up being used at a very large scale. So, so you had one of these kind of real-time streams or logs for each type of thing happening in the company. Um, you know, the kind of daily write volume was well over a trillion messages, uh, with much more than that being read, and, and well over a petabyte of this kind of log or stream data that was being retained at any given time. And you know, actually, one of the harder things for this type of system was it supported uh, several thousand engineers all working off of it without uh, you know, being slow or, or being constrained by working with that infrastructure. And uh, it's been released as open source and has actually you know, become quite popular uh, recently. So you know, this, is, uh, this is deployed at scale at a number of these companies where it acts as kind of core data pipeline. Um, and, um, you know, since then, uh, I, I've left LinkedIn. I, I'm actually doing a company that's, that's helping to um, support this, this project and kind of this way of thinking about data. One of the interesting things that has come out of our work is we're actually building out a lot of these connectors to data systems, including a prototype uh, for Postgres that, that uses kind of the logical replication feature and helps tap in and do kind of change capture from that. Um, we've got a similar thing uh, that, that's kind of in progress for a few other databases, but that, that kind of whole area is just getting off the ground and making it really easy to tap in. And that's it. Thanks, everyone.